inspire, empower, grab your girls and soar a little higher, unlock the fire in you, cause real women don't bitch, no, real women don't, 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 bitch. Hey, 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 thank you for joining me on the Real Women Don't Bitch podcast. This is your proud host, August Crenshaw, a.k.a. Mrs. Raw, Real and Relentless. I am the number one advanced mental conditioning specialist for entrepreneurs because building mental muscle is necessary in order to implement successful business strategies. This show has been created for the woman who is not excuse driven and needs help building a profitable business. I will be interviewing women from various fields who are willing to break the silence on struggles that specifically affect female entrepreneurs. Welcome to a show where I and guest speakers from time to time share our methods that help us beast our business no matter what is going on in our lives. Whether you are an online or brick and mortar business owner, this show is for you. We will hit every angle, personal, professional, and spiritual. Why? Because on any given day, you get hit with shit from a scenario involving one, more, or perhaps all of the above. It all impacts you and your mindset towards your business. I have made it my personal mission to provide a space where we dive deep into the BS we face on a day-to-day basis. Yes. Woo! Y'all already know I'm so super duper animated. So listen, social media is one of the best things that has ever happened to me, ladies. I am so glad to be here. Matter of fact, the internet is one of the best things that ever happened to me and i remember when it first came out i thought it was the most ridiculous confusing thing to use but now because of it i am connected with women literally all over the world all over the globe and some of them i get to speak to every once in a while and some i get to speak to more routinely the woman that's coming on here right now it's been a minute uh since we've had a chat but Sparks flew in that first conversation. So y'all need to know I was a little tad bit giddy when I put a call to action out there saying, does anybody want to go and come on here and be a guest on the podcast? And she was like, I'm down for a conversation. And I was like, yes, because you know, you don't want to stalk people. You know, people can make a conscious decision. So I love it, you know, when the ladies come to me. So, you know, I'm a, now that you've been on here, I'm just letting you know in advance before she's even introduced, I'm going to ask for you back because I know your power. But anywho, you guys, I'm just going to say welcome to Miss Shari, Shareen Goodman. I almost said your name wrong. And, uh, and I'm happy to have you here. So welcome to the podcast. Oh, well, thank you, August. I mean, I really am excited to be here. I mean, what can I say? Conversation and you rock. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, there's not really much to say. You don't have to put a whole lot into that, right? No. Uh, I'm really excited to be here. Man, and, and, and they don't know because they haven't heard us together before, but we're going to have to cut this thing off because I already know that you and I can go and go and go and go and go. So let's just get into it because, see, this none of my podcasts are ever planned. But me and you were having a conversation that lasted for about three minutes. I said something, you said something. And yes, I'm going to let you guys get to know Miss Shireen, all of that good stuff. But we realized that there's a topic that we need to talk about. So we're going to get there. And I'm excited because there was so much energy bouncing off of the two of us just from bringing the topic up that I'm like, woo. So y'all get ready. Get your pins out. Take some notes, get ready to write some stuff now because this episode is gonna rock. But before we do that, let's let everybody, you know, just get to know who you are personally. Who are you as as a woman? Mm. Mm. All right. So um, again, my name is Shareen Goodman, and I am known as the leadership mixologist, right? The leadership mixologist. Why? Um, just because I love talking leadership. Leadership is everything. And so me as a person coming from San Francisco, now living in Chicago, right, where the temperature right now is just like, whoop, are we talking like crazy weather? Um, but, uh, but yeah, so 
Uh, but who I am as a person is somebody that really understands and wants to see the power of people really be ignited. Mm. Um, just me as a person is just like, man, how do you take who you are and make something great out of your life? Mm. And, um, and that's what I just, I mean, me as a person is being able to see that, you know, because even when I think about where we are right now as a society, I think a lot of people have lost sight of who they really are. And they're mm. begging, just begging to help me to identify this, help me to understand the power that I have and how to wield it effectively. Um, and I think that that's it. I think I've always been that way since I, <laughs> I was young, having lost my, my um, mother at such a young age. Um, she passed away when I think I was probably not five, not more than six. And then being able to figure out, figure out life. Like, how do I figure out life? Mm. Your parents are no longer there and you're being raised by your grandparents and you're trying to understand what life is. And so, um, and, and that you have all this power right? You have all the spirit in you. You have something that you are called to do that's so big and you need help trying to figure that out. And that to oh. me comes in. So that's who I am as a person. You'd be like, like, you know, like kind of like a, an amoeba wrapped inside a riddle. Man, I'm, I'm going to tell you, you, you sparked something inside of me because I'm just a firm believer that when we become more courageous and comfortable having conversations about who we are, our struggles, our present, our past, that we find out what's really going on energetically and why we're attracted to each other. And no, my mother did not pass when I was young, but we share that common thread of having to be raised by grandparents. Mm. When I was 18 months, my mother gave me to my father's mother. And mm. so that, that helps me understand even the more why some of our core values about spirituality and people and being leaders that the insight, the kind of upbringing that you get raised from women and men in that era is different, you yeah. know? And so when, when I, when I meet another woman, it's not enough just to know how I can help her as a business owner or that stuff. It's about where do, where do we connect it personally? And I honestly feel like part of the reason why we're lost is because we're losing connection, even though we are physically and virtually connected to people. So, you know, I love that, that, you were that you shared that leadership though it's been in you since since day one and there are some people and somebody might refute this especially if you follow someone like john c maxwell he um in his book the 21 irrefutable laws of leadership said that that leaders are not typically naturally born and i do honestly believe that you some people are naturally born leaders but the question is whether or not that gift has to be cultivated because some of us just come out the gate as little bitty kids doing that. And so I agree with them to some degree. And then I kind of have just a different view with a little bit of pushback. Um, but anyway, that's, that's who you are. So how does that translate into who you are as a, as a business owner? You know, so, and I think that that's a, a one, always a great question, right? But two, like to your point with John Maxwell. So when I do, so I have this program I call Ignite Your Big. And the big is birth internal greatness Ooh. because internal greatness is already in you, but you have the opportunity to birth it every moment if you're consciously aware and that you, if you take it on. And so whenever I do this program, I always ask people, well, are leaders made or are they born? Cause that's like the side to two sides to the same coin. That's what people ask. Well, they're born leaders and leaders are made. Um, leaders are born. And I say, my question, my theme is when I get the answer, because people will say, well, they're born and or no, they're made. And I say, well, it's both. You cannot be a leader unless first you are birthed into the earth born, right? So you have to be born. And then secondly, leaders are made. You, you might have natural tendencies, right, about leadership, but they're made, meaning you could be made a bad leader. Mm. We won't talk about certain people, right? But anyway, you could be made into bad leadership or you can be made into great leadership. Mm -hmm. They are made. Great leaders are made. They are taught. They are cultivated. So when I think about like business, so 
Um, I have I have a very eclectic background. Um, you know, I started in fashion and retail, and then <laughs> somehow moved into consulting, right? Training, um, communication, um, and, and all of these different skill sets that I've had to develop over time. Being a management consultant, a project manager, um, managing large pro projects for some global brands like McDonald's, Goldman Sachs, um, Chase Bank. And I've had some great experience at, around that. But now in term, but at a certain point, I was like, I am so done working the nine to five deal. Mm -hmm. Why? Because there's a call that's bigger than nine to five that I felt. There's a call that's bigger and that somehow you have got to connect with those with people who know that there's something bigger in them and that they're being called whether or not whether it's in their the corporate world or in the business world but for me it was like coaching in order to develop people in their performance whatever that performance is um, and to get them to really run plays and like you know when I, as a coach I'm like I'm not here to help you just like oh yeah, whatever. That's a, that's, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's a nonchalant cheerleader. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's like, as, as a coach, if you think about any coach, you're here to get the, the ring. You're here to get the trophy. You are here to get that thing that is amazing for you. Mm -hmm. You can call it your dream job. I mean, I've helped, but my thing is run the play. As mm -hmm. a coach, I'm here to help you tell you, get you to understand this is the play you need to run, run the play, right? Mm. And so as you run these series of plays, you will get to the end goal, you know? And so again, a roundabout way. So that's how, for what I do right now as a business, I, you know, I like to say, I'm not just a business coach. I'm not just a career coach. I really am a success coach. I am here advocating for your success. Right. And yeah. so when I think about that and it comes in so many different ways, it comes in me helping you to develop your leadership. Yes. You know, can I can I interject like really? Yeah, oh, yeah, please. I, I, I absolutely, totally and thoroughly loved everything that you said. And, you know, one of the one thing I definitely want to speak to. And that's because I had a call before this podcast episode with a woman that was interested in working with me. And while we were talking. I was working to find out more about her vision, her desires, what it was that she wanted to make sure that as a leader, that I even stood behind what she wanted, that I agreed, that I could also have the foresight to see, to be a visionary on behalf of her until she can latch on and rock that thing out for herself. And, and so for me personally, when I first got into this coaching game, I didn't know what it was. And I was like, I'll do whatever it takes. And I found so many people are about the process, meaning their systems, mm. not about the process in developing people. And, mm. and that's what I hear from you, that you, and you can't tell somebody how to run the play if you're telling them to play for the basketball game and they trying to play football. And so you, you know, being about the person and knowing what sport, you know, what, what are you doing is important. The other thing that I love is the fact that you said, basically, you know, if I got a niche down, you know, we can say business coach or career <laughs> coach, but at the end of the day, I'm about honing leadership. And that's something that I, I always like to encourage my listeners when you get ready to work with someone, you need to make sure that their natural bend, their natural orientation is to a spirit of servitude. It's to knowing that they have a calling. It's to being more concerned about making something in you. Because just because you have a, a large following, just because you have all of the fancy graphics and you are able to have a very cavalier tongue, very charismatic, that you can get people to buy your stuff who are acting out of desperation because they've lost sight of who they are, they don't know their power, does not mean that you're a leader. Yes. You know, and it's interesting because, you know, August, because I think that they're like, even when I think about uh, the, the coaching world, right? So again, like I said, I, I have a training background. I think that there's been, there's this collapsing of really what 
coaching is and what I think training is, there's a big distinction between coaching somebody and training somebody. Um, and I think that there, there's a place for it. Um, but when I think about, like, again, when I, as a coach, as me, Shireen as coach, right? Shireen as advocating for your success. I have to deal with you. You can come to me for career coaching, business coaching, you know, I need to get this interview done or whatever. But what I find is that I'm not, I, I, there are processes, you have to have processes, but when you come to me again, you have, you're going for the goal, right? You're going for the, the ring. And so, and for whatever reason, you don't know how to do that. Like, and let me just give an example of a career, a client that I had did career coaching, right? Remember we had a, a, one of these, a conversation over coffee, the first time we were meeting and right mm -hmm. in that conversation, she recognized she needed coaching because she was stuck. It, it, in her um, current company. But when we decided to coach together, she was actually of getting, uh, was going in the interviewing process. So I said, I'm not gonna try to tell you the words that you need to use because I'm not gonna be in there with you. You're gonna have to hold your own. I said, but what the coaching is, I want you to come from your big. I want you to understand how you're going to stand up and be in that interview. Because they're not looking for whether or not you can do the job. They already know you can. But do you have the leadership in order to make it happen? Yeah. And that was our coaching together. Cool. Coaching her for every step in the interview. She did so well in that process because she understood now I'm coming from my big. I don't have to try to make it up. I'm coming from this greatness that's already in me. And she got that position her dream job and she got 40 percent she did so well they paid her above what she had put out what, what her range was that was her i said you got to understand you're coming from within your leadership and all you're doing is putting it on display so that they can see it and so we think it's um most people think it's like, oh my God, like out of desperation. Oh, I got to know how to figure out how to do this. No, at some point you will. But if you can really tap into what am I trying to do? What is it that I'm looking for? How can I use this? Because my whole thing is that if you know that you are in a box, you can get yourself out of a box. But if you don't even know how to get yourself out of it, mm -hmm. man, you're stuck. But Absolutely. Then, you know? But the best thing is, is that if, you're, if you know how to get out of the box, then if you ever had to get back in it for whatever reason, you know how to do that. You're not dependent on somebody. You are coming from the greatness that's already in you. That's your leadership. Nobody can lead your life. Nobody can lead your business. Nobody can lead your career but you. You're absolutely responsible for whatever success you create. And a coach is only there like me, run this play. Okay, I understand that you're kind of stuck right now or I can understand that you really don't see something right now that you need to see. So here's the play that I want you to run. But you're going to have understanding around that play because it's going to be coming from you. And I, as a coach, am just going to, I'm here to just help you improve your performance, uh, see something different, give you a different wisdom, give you a different perspective, but I will never make your decisions for you as a coach. Man, there was so much wrapped up inside of that. And I, and I know the ladies caught it. I'm always inter, you know, interjecting and making sure that the audience is hearing that. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I always say is that I'm not here to try to make you dependent upon me. You know, you'll, some people, their methodology is how long can I leave someone on the hook? And honestly, that's a scarcity mentality to me because if you need someone to be on the hook, then that means that you think that there's a, a, a very small number of people that you're going to be able to help. So you got to get as much money from them as you can mm -hmm. versus someone who says this world is so vast. Now, mm -hmm. if, as, if as I'm growing and learning and adding more to myself as a leader, you have to keep staying with me because you want to keep getting what I'm getting. That's different. But we are supposed to be opening up people to their 
own greatness so that they don't need anyone anymore. And I love that about you. But, you, but the other thing you brought up, the difference between the coaching and the training, and a lot of people are saying, that's my coach, that's my coach. But really all you bought was a training, a set of steps that are pretty generic that and, and even if they're potent in their generic their generic state it's do this do that okay this is a system go through the process and then you should expect this at the end but coaching means that you have to spend time getting into the psyche you got to get into someone's mind because it's not just enough to say run the play you got to you know they're like okay well i don't get why this isn't working okay well your stamina is a little bit low i'm going to need you to get your muscle up because by telling you to run this play is going to reveal the areas of uh, that you need to improve in it's going to also show you well wait a minute i'm good at doing this so i got to keep pushing that and capitalize off of it and that's, you know, that's one core fundamental difference. But the other thing that you said that was just really had me over here brewing was the fact that you don't have something to tell someone. And so don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with templates either or scripts. But um, for me, for instance, as a sales coach, mm -hmm. when a person is like, okay, well, what do I say? What do I say? It's like, I'm not going to tell you what to say. Uh, the, and I know people out there, they'll say, just ask these questions. You know, who are you? What do you want? What's blocking you? What would your life be if you could, you know, wave a magic wand and, and change it right now? And are you willing to, you know, and it's like, but that doesn't necessarily always work because somebody's going to throw you a curveball. So it's like that person that was going for that position. If you said, okay, I'm going to train you to be perfect for an interview. So here's the question. What are your strengths that you have? And she's like, okay, so just let's just say, say my strengths are this and this and this. But what if she went into that interview and she had somebody say something along the lines of what are the best assets that you have to bring to this company? Mm -hmm. Even though technically they mean the same things, when you are robotically trained to answer this like this and that, it could throw, oh, um... And then you got to, by the time that slight delay is you trying to think and figure something out. And what you're saying is, is there is innate greatness inside of us. And that what you want a person to do is say, look, you got to spark a flame because the, here's the, here's the weird, there's the funny thing. And I'm going to pass the baton back as a CEO. If I, if, you know, which they, they have their, their HR department, but me as a boss, if I'm going to hire as a CEO of my business, if I'm going to hire someone to take on a position for me, I don't want to know that you're robotic. I don't mm -hmm. want to know that you can only follow tasks. I want to know that you set me on fire. I don't care if I'm always motivating, if I'm inspiring and if I'm fierce, I want to see beyond basic skills that anybody can be taught. What, how, do you, how do you navigate situations? How do you problem solve? How do you execute? How do you take charge? Is that leadership inside of you? Because real leaders are looking for someone who shines just as bright as them so that they don't have to sit there and micromanage and figure out how everything is going to end up working. And so it's really a switch, you know, especially for entrepreneurs to get from that employee mindset to that entrepreneurial mindset that says, no, I'm not micromanaged anymore. I'm not micromanaging anybody else. I see greatness in myself and I see greatness in others. And how do we collectively get together so we cause something that's extremely explosive together? Yes. You know, and you know, August, uh, you were talking about this and I think that this is probably what you're kind of like, um, um, maybe alluding to, and you let me know if, if, not, if, if it's not, but when I think about leadership, again, everybody has the seed of leadership within them, whether they work to cultivate it, whether they work to cultivate it to create a harvest, the seed of leadership is there. And there's a responsibility, I believe, for every person that really is up to wanting to do something to, to develop that. Well, when I think about, now here's the thing when I think about leadership, and again, as I coach, I Everybody wants to say, okay, what kind of leader are you? I don't believe that there is a specific type of leader that you need to ascribe to be because leadership is a way of being. Yes. I decide that I'm going to be leadership based on the circumstance or the situation 
that's in front of me. And it's going to call me based on the situation to show up as a leader in a specific way. Mm. I always share with, with people, people that leadership is you're prepping for leadership and you need to understand. And again, it's important um, to really have consciousness. You can't be unconscious in leadership, right? Mm. Leadership is saying I'm present. I understand my communication is going to be right for the situation for the person um, so when I think about leadership again how do I prep for leadership there are times when I need to be uh, in between right mm. so if I'm helping to be leader in terms of conflict I am in between two people trying to be very objective and not trying to be biased or take sides that is a serious conscious level of leadership yes it is you know, there are times when I have to be under leadership. So if I have a boss over me, I need to know that I am still a leader, but I am under authority. I am under leadership. doesn't say that I'm a bad person. It's like, no, how do I act when I'm under authority? And you haven't so lost any status. You still are who you are. Yes. And so again, it's like, it's not like you're not a leader. The only way that you're not a leader is when you choose not to be. But how can you have a life, a life that you create by design rather than by default if you're not leading it with intention? So you have to have leadership in some capacity. But leadership is never outside. Leadership is always within. Mm -hmm. Now, you might see external effect of leadership outside, but it's always starting within. And the better that you can create and develop and ignite, like I said, ignite that big, Every moment of every day, you get a chance to make a decision. You get a chance to operate in leadership, and you get to choose it. You know, I say it's like, call the shot. What shot are you calling? Call the shot. Call, call it, and then move towards it with intention, with leadership, with expectancy. You know, and so it's just, it's, it's just such an amazing conversation. And that's the other thing, too, like when it comes to coaching, kind of like the distinction for, with training – which I love is because when, it, when I'm coaching you, we are in a miracle-causing conversation. Mm -hmm. We are getting ready to create a miracle here in this conversation. Mm -hmm. I remember I had a client, too, and, you know, again, he came, to me, it was a, he came to me for career coaching, right? Now, again, we always have to have a point to hang our hat on, right? But what, I, but what resulted was... There were major decisions. He was so, he couldn't get clarity because there was an elephant in the room. Had nothing to do with the career. Had nothing to do with the thought of going into entrepreneurship. But there was an elephant in the room that he needed to deal with. Hmm. But it came out and he got coaching, exercises, things to really think about so that he could make a decision about the elephant that was in the room. Because once you got past that, and I was sharing with him, um, it's like I said, this is all about your leadership. Don't get it twisted. Hello. There is a call for leadership with you right now, but it's caught up in this elephant that's in the room that you're going to have to deal with. And only you can make the decision about mm. what you're going to do with it. But the fact that we were able to reveal it in the coaching process, in the conversation, gave him such freedom. You know? And so... You know what? So again, when I just think about um, coaching, I think it's such the most powerful thing that people can do for themselves. Do for themselves, right? Yeah. Like to get you to that again ring, to that trophy, that winning trophy, not just a trophy of participation, right? Hello. The one, that you know, <laughs> the one that you know. And you can see it, and for whatever reason, you, you, I know you're trembling over it, but you know it's for you. You know that if you got it, that it would totally shift your life. That, to me, is the power of real coaching. Mm. And you can't put it in some small, discreet, separate box, because your life is never separated from anything that you do. Whether it's your business, whether it's your career, whether it's the fact that you don't have your job, you're not in your dream job, the fact that you're stuck, okay, you're, it, all of this is, okay, well, how am I going to leave myself out of this? How do I get out of this? Um, and that is where I think, again, a, a coach, a real coach, you know that your life is so much more valuable 
than the game that you're playing right now. So if you, but if you make the investment, when you, you have to invest in your life, when you're investing in a coach, you are investing in your life, the life that you want to create by design. So mm. anyway, I just, I mean, when I just, no, what you said, you said so much and I'm sure that they caught a lot of it. You know, I can't necessarily respond to everything. I'll go back to one of the things that you were talking about though. Um, with the, the style of leadership and mm. you know what? And I, and I, and I'm love that you address the fact because I remember when people would be like, Oh, you know, you, you are, you are rough kicking ass kind of coach or, you know, you a straight talker. And, and, and it's like, you know, I'm, I'm the kind of woman that I need to be. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the things about, you know, being a coach. Sometimes there needs to be a little bit more compassion. Sometimes in the, you know, for instance, in the beginning of a coaching situation, there's a lot more directing and a lot more guiding. Mm-hmm. Cause it's like you, somebody for me, like with business coaching, you've taken like 17 million different steps going in 15 million different directions. All of them happen to be wrong or out <laughs> or untimely, you know, yeah. and it's like, wait a minute, you know, or they would be right. If they were more timely, we got to look at this thing. We got to fix it. Yes. And in the beginning, it made me look to say, okay, you know, I remember one client I told, I was like, look, don't you create anything else? Don't you do this? Narrow your niche, go through these exercises because you're steady creating pro- uh, products. You're trying to do that. So I would say, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. Once she got her niche narrowed and she was, you know, she had a stable system, a stable product. I'm like, why aren't you doing anything? Well, I'm waiting on you to tell me to go. I said, no, 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 no. I've never told you when you can or you can't go. Remember, I asked you to slow down until you dealt with this issue. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes as a coach, I may run more interference. Sometimes as a coach, I may babysit to a degree a little bit more. Other times I may fall back and just see what's going to happen. There are times when I want to jump in, but I'm like, I just need to see how they handle this situation because they need to learn from it. Sometimes I feel like, whoa, 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 you're about to approach a situation. If you want to still go into it, go ahead. But I want to, you know, forewarn you that these are some of the reasons why you might want to dissect whether or not you go forward or you don't. And so as a coach, there is no just this one way. There are sometimes I got to look at somebody and say, look, you're not showing up. You are hiding behind a mask. You've made this website, these pictures, these things, because you aren't, you don't feel that you're accepted the way you're talking. You're not being who you are, blah, 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 blah. You won't let me help you, even though you're paying me, which tells me you got a mindset glitch. You think you're unworthy of love and support. And it's like, oh my God. And I know that it may take them 24 hours. It may even take them into the next session for them to truly let what I said marinate for them to be like, damn it, August told me the truth. And I've got to, I got to go ahead and go to this next session so that she can help me work through this stuff. And there are other times where I'm just like highly inquisitive. Okay. So let me just ask you, what do you think is inside of you that won't allow you to receive love or what's going, you know, so there's so many different ways that you have to come and to be honest with you, a real leader continuously grows and works to master the ability to morph and what they need to be. And so, like you said, whether you're with somebody, you know, upper managed, lower management, whether it's in your career, whether it's in your entrepreneurial journey, sometimes leadership it's from the back. It's not, it's not from the front. Sometimes you are being a leader by not taking the reins, by just saying, I, I'm going to fall back because I trust that you got this. And sometimes you got to be up there kind of more like rescue 911. We don't, and, and, and part of being able to dist- differentiate what you do is that closeness of the relationship by having that interaction to begin to be intertwined to feel the person energetically to begin to observe patterns behavior sometimes it's intuition sometimes it's direct observation but all of these things that's part of what makes a coach and so a lot of people are step snap and coach on their name just because they think that they can teach a skill or they can give a questionnaire to get to the root of a problem but you don't get you need to get to the root of the person to understand how to help them get to the root of the problem in order to be able to solve it in the first place but all of this as we've been saying it goes back to are you know are you really really a leader and a lot of people say I'm a leader I'm a leader but who is following you and not only who is following you but who has caught up to you who has surpassed you. See, a lot of us, we don't necessarily really want to 
give away the juice as we think. We're not really giving anything away because we're helping somebody else cultivate what's already inside of them because then they're going to potentially be a threat. They're going to outshine me or whatever. But a real leader understands that you're always constantly in this process of growing followers. You're turning into leaders. You're following. You're leading. It's always the cycle that's continuously going on. And if you're always in the forefront, you're not really you're not really a leader. No, you know. And I, again, I think that a lot of what you're saying is just it's just really is the juice, right? It's the fuel. Like, and I love when you said it's to get to the root of the person, right? The person, the, the person, the person, the leader is what's, you got to get to the root of it and they got to see it, right? So again, I, when, I, and when I just think about all of what you were just saying in, in coaching and in training and developing um, people, it, whether it's in their business it's their entrepreneurial journey, which to me, for me, I'm really a bit, bit, big advocate for entrepreneurship. I really am because my mission is really to help primarily females to create their own personal economy, right? Not to be attached to anything, not to be attached to a system, not to be attached to another man-made crisis like the financial crisis. That was a big eye opener for me. And so when I thought about that, and when you talked about like the love of the internet, being able to leverage the power of the internet through entrepreneurship, right? And then being able to, to, to de-separate or distinguish yourself from a job employee to really be in the mindset of a business owner, right? Mm -hmm. You own something. And that takes a lot of shifting, a lot of thinking. It takes a lot of going deep and rooting out that job mentality and place replacing it with um, entrepreneurship leadership mentality. See, because yeah. even when I think about this, I think that, you know, my, I think female entrepreneur equals leader, right? Mm -hmm. Female entrepreneur does not equal, I have a job. Female entrepreneur does not equal, um, oh, well, I have everybody to tell me what to do. Tell me how to do it. You got to have a thought. You have to think. You have to understand what's my strategy. All that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. All that, those are what they call leadership skills. And so, um, you know, when I just think about when you're talking about coaching and co talking about leadership and how do you have to be um, in a different way, how do you have to have compassion at times, right? Because you do. And then there are times when, you know what, okay, I've done the compassion part. I need you to take action. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Right. Now, do you want to take action or not take action? That's a choice that you get to make, but it's your choice. Because yeah. I... You know, and, and, and so when I just think about that, I think that it's one of the most fascinating things when you could be in a conversation and go like, okay, well, it's up to you. What would you like to do? Do you yes. think, you know, like I have people, when I think about too, um, uh, I, this whole thing about getting rid of the excuses, we can all make excuses, excuses. So as a coach, my thing is like, okay, so I heard the excuse, granted, I even caught the excuse. Oh, all right, so that's not gonna work. You need to figure out or we will talk about, but you have to make a decision. Either you're going to live in the excuses or you're going to live in the power of you making a decision and moving past the excuse, you know, and, and all, all of that stuff. Here's the deal too. All of that stuff. We want things to be so linear and so perfect and so straight. And I'm telling you, it is not. It's like a whole ball of rubber bands tied together. You know what I mean? Oh, it's God. And you have to be able to, well, how do I think through this? How do I take action? How do I keep moving? How do I do all of this stuff? That's, that is huge. And that's why when I think about it, it, it's just, it's part of life, but it's also part of leadership because le a leader will step into their power and say, okay, I get it. Absolutely. And I'm glad that you even just pointed out the whole thing, the linear thing, because even some people... Uh, they're very naive. They're like, oh, I'm going to hire a coach. And so since I'm hiring a coach, then I'm going to get out here, do they tell me to do, and it's going to be great. And it's like, no, we're going to cultivate a plan based on your vision. You're going to get out there and you've got to test it. You know, and we're, we're not magicians. You know, we don't know everything right you could be telling me you, you you could come to me you could tell me that you got the greatest thing since sliced bread and you know because 
For instance, myself, I just knew I was supposed to be a life coach because <laughs> I spent 20 years as a cosmetologist. I was always helping people with their life when they were getting their hair done. And I was in the churches and I was helping doing ministry and whether it was marriage or with children. So I help people with life. Mm -hmm. I, how, if I would have went to someone and was like, help me to become the best life coach I could be. Now, based on my personality and my characteristics, I, I, again, I did do life coaching. I, I would have been a bomb, you know, I, I, that, but that was not my calling. Mm -hmm. Nine times out of 10, there was going to reach a point where I could only go so far. And then I would be like, this ain't for me. And I would want to stop or cancel the program. But if someone takes the time to talk to you and says, hey, so what are your strengths? You know, what are your gifts? What do you like to do? What are some things you thought about doing, but you're hesitant to do because you don't think you're qualified for or whatever it looks like, then they might have been like, okay, wait a minute. You talk a lot about just helping people. I noticed that you've helped a lot of entrepreneurs. You mm -hmm. sure you don't want to be a business coach? Then they would help me, you know, create a completely different path. But mm -hmm. a lot of people, they got their mind made up and they don't even realize that they're probably picking the thing that they think will be the most advantageous and the easiest to make money. You go hire a coach and then the coach tells you to get out there and they could have given you a great plan. Mm -hmm. But because you don't know yourself and unless you're working with someone that's working on knowing you, you're going to get out there and it's not going to work. Your spirit, I'm not even talking about your sales skills, but your spirit can't sell what they've been teaching you to do because like I said, you're in the wrong game. Mm -hmm. Or even if you're in the right one, you could, you sometimes you're limited by your vision. If you always work with the older women in the church, you may think that you're always supposed to work with old women. But once you start marketing with your style, you may, you may connect with women that are in their early thirties or their, their late twenties. But the only way we're going to know is if we get out there and test because part of our advice i always tell people my advice to you is no better than the data that you give me uh I, great phrase <laughs> you know it, i mean really data what are you telling me right and, you, and i just love i think that's great and you won't know and i think the testing is so incredible right it's like oh uh, people can tell you that what they've done and this goes back to my technical writing. So I used to do technical writing, right? Steps and how do you to do certain things. There's so much stuff that's missing and why people don't get it, right? Well, you can go through a process, but people are running stuff in their head that they, you've never written down. So whatever somebody is telling you that this is what I've done and I know it's going to work, that's just like, no, you don't know until you test it for yourself and yeah. put your own secret sauce into the formula yes. for yourself. You know, I remember when I was managing managing projects and I was like, people said, oh, we'll, we'll go into a project. Oh, well, we, we did this for another, uh, another company before. Okay. That doesn't mean that it's going to work the way that you say it. Mm -hmm. Why? Because there are so many different variables and the key variable that is different from every project are the people. Absolutely. I'm like, oh, okay. I, yes. They don't, I talk about that all the time. And I remember um, the, there was this woman and she worked in nonprofit for like over, a, it was well over a decade, but she had great, she started at the bottom. And she's, you know, she was one of those people that she went from sweeping floors to being the person that was writing the grants and knowing what was in the budget, selecting speakers, doing these different things. And so when she launched her own business, helping people establish nonprofits, she was like, you know, I practiced the law of attraction and, you know, and I did all these things and I set my intention. I realized that's not where I was supposed to be anymore. You know, in nine months, I built a six figure business. Come on here with me so that I can teach you how to create your own nonprofit and do what I did, you know, you, and it's like, okay, but when you work with someone, they're going to come to you and tell you they want to do this for, you know, sex trafficking or whatever, and they're going to use your formula, but they didn't have your connections. Right. They didn't have the rapport. They didn't have a lot of the know-how with the technical jargon that's because of all of the ways that you operated in it. The, the facet of nonprofit that you went into, that's been around for a decade. 
developing nonprofits now for sex trafficking is more, not that it hasn't been done, but now almost everybody, you know, is starting one. And what is the, what kind of taste is that putting in the mouths of people when you're going to them? You know, are people really ready to accept that that's a real problem in this state of society right now? Or were you going to be pushing this thing and really believing in it? And it's going to take three to four years before the bubble kind of busts and there's a sense of urgency. And because you've been in the game for that long, they're going to realize it's you. And so that's just another example, the unique variables. And so I, I have clients that I have one client that left her job and she less than a year from working with me. And people that come to me that know who she is, I tell them all the time, but you can't expect to have her results. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, we mapped out her income and not just, I need enough to pay my rent, my gas and my electric. It was like, calculate how much it's going to cost for you to pay taxes every year. Calculate how much it's going to cost for you to put gas in your car, groceries. I need to know about every cell phone bill, light bill. You're going to be paying for your own health insurance. I need you to calculate any and everything. Count the cost. Yeah. And then come back and say how much money you have to make. And she's like, well, yeah, you know, I'm going to do the email funnel and I'm going to do these series. I said, girl, do you know how hard it is to build an email list? Do you understand that based on the statistical data that only this percent open, only this percent click, and only this percent pay? So let's talk about your income. And you want to price your product at this amount? That means you need 10,000 people on your list. Only this amount of people are going to... And excuse me, do you really think that people are going to flood? And then you got a product where you're introducing something new? Let's be real about the experience. I said, but this is what you can do. And then we talked about how she create, she would create money first. Mm. and then worry about some of those other things because she was you not she wasn't going to just jump and do anything but so many women get out there and they invest in the automation of websites and all of these things you you and you have no idea how to connect to the people because all of the people are going to be different and and we just don't what career entrepreneurship anything we just don't want you to jump into these situations believing that when you see somebody that you say if they can do it i can do it just like it happened for them if they can do it you can do it too because we know there's greatness inside of all of us but please respect the fact that there will always be unique variables in every situation yes yes and i and i think that that's one of the greatest things about um when you can recognize again it w- w- taking it from a sense of leadership right you i say that you can create a life by design, create your own success, but that really looks what you want, not some cookie cutter, somebody else's vision of what success is, because you can really get yourself into a world of hurt trying to recreate somebody else's um, life, right? Instead of taking um, the time to design and create and to love the life that you want to have and one that will really make you excited and proud to say man this was my life right or you can stay in the drift and let it happen by default and be miserable and not really stepping up into your grace stepping up into your greatness um it's so it's it's really really very it's it's interesting around that right but i think that one thing that people really can get out of uh, even this conversation is that you have the opportunity, and I think that's the amazing thing: the opportunity to say, you know, what I really want to, I really want a life. I really want to create and design and lead my life intentionally, mm-hmm. not by just being sleep and numb to it. You can make anything happen for yourself if you're committed to making it happen, and then finding the right people, right coach to help you through it. And there are some people that I really believe need a kick butt type of coach because they just won't do it. They, they, they say they want it, but they just won't do it mm. on themselves for themselves. And so, yeah, they need a coach that's like, okay, here's the deal. This is what I need from you. We're going to plan the work and work the plan. Well, understand that the plan is not just a one page plan. The plan is your, is your, how you going to make it happen plan, right? Understanding that you need, you need to understand your numbers. How do I make my cash flows? When I say make 
my cash flow. Do you understand what cash flow even is, right? If you know your number, your data, like you were talking about data, right? Data, what's the data? So from the data, I can now figure out what I need to do. I may not even need to do all that I think I need to do or everybody's telling me to do when I look at my own data. And I have yes. somebody help me to understand, like a coach that says, okay, I hear what you're saying, but the data says this. So mm -hmm. how can we create? And what will you need to do? Step in your power, your leadership to make this happen. And I think that those are the conversations that have been missing for so long. That's why people are like, oh, I hate my job. <laughs> I want to yeah. get in business, but I don't know what I'm doing in business, right? But yeah. those are the conversations that must happen. You cannot hide your head in the sand like an ostrich and expect yeah. to be flying like an eagle. It just won't happen. Right. But I just, I just, I don't, I just think that again, like we were talking, all of this that is meshed together and, and it is because it's just called life, right? Okay. You've got to do something with it. But you don't have to fly solo. You don't have to fly and try to figure everything out. But you do need, you do need somebody who understands it's not going to be playing games, right? Like yes. you're saying, okay, fine. How would you waste your time? We don't need to waste time. We need to get things in action. And here thing, and when I think about now, and just even when I think about, you know, the government shutdown, oh, okay, that was my opener. Really? People? Wow. That's fascinating. Mm. That's all I can say. That's fascinating. Yeah. Don't let that happen to you. Get it together. You have time. Make it happen. Figure out what your plan is. You yes. know? And then Woo. be <laughs> oh, look, I told you, I knew I was going to have to watch the clock with you because <laughs> yes, you, opened, so on, you opened up the door for me to say something else. And I'm like, mm, then okay. we're going for another 30 minutes. And I know the ladies, they already like, this is juicy. But y'all already know when I have special guests, it's going to be about a 45 minute to an hour episode. This, this is amazing. And I'm going to kind of lead into something that I hope that you will go ahead and mention because I think that it's important. You talk about creating that life that you desire, <clears throat> a.k.a. calling the shots. <laughs> For those of you that's watching on YouTube, you know what's so funny. But no, seriously, uh, ladies, you, you guys have been listening. And, and I want you to, I love to have other coaches on here. Because mm -hmm. I know that I can't serve the entire world. And if anything in your heart and your spirit and the essence of your soul has said, who is that woman that she has on that podcast episode right now? I need her. Mm -hmm. I ain't even going to lie. A lot of you that follow me, you are in transition in corporate America mm -hmm. as you are building your business. You know what? You may need her for some career coaching to help get you in a different position because some of you need more time to build your business. And if she can help you get into the right job while mm -hmm. you are building your business, I don't know. But whatever your spirit has felt led to, um, Shireen, tell them where to find you, talk to them about, you know, what you have to offer them. I want you all to stay connected to her and potentially work with her if that's the way your guidance system is leading you. Yes. Wow. Well, I do appreciate that. And, um, so really, uh, Shireen Goodman, right? You can find me on Instagram at Shireen Goodman. You can find me on my website at Shireen Goodman. Um, even on Facebook, um, Shireen Goodman. <laughs> Google um, yeah, you can Google me. That's cool too. Um, you know, but the, the one thing too, like when I talk about call the shot, so I have this um, uh, ebook, right? Call the shot. I mean, can you just even when you think about that, call the shot that you get the opportunity and the privilege to call the shot on whatever it is that you want to have happen in your life. That's taken on and be responsible for the success and owning your own success. And I know that it's a challenge. It's like, well, what shot do I call? You know, like August was mentioning, your vision. What's your vision? Think about that. You get this blank canvas to put whatever it is you want on it, whether it's a career, whether it's a business. And granted, you may not know how to do it. That's another false reality that people think we're supposed to know everything when we step out and do something new and never make a mistake. No, you are going to make mistakes, but those are the experience. So you might even want to ask, well, what experiences do I want to experience in my life? Call the shot on that, right? And so, and that's how I think you really start to build a life in the success to amass whatever success you want to amass. But it's like calling the shots. And my book is about 
these principles. Don't get deluded. You are responsible 100%. Your mind, your attitude, your belief, all of these nuggets mm -hmm. that we think shouldn't play a part, you have to start to call the shot for your life. And that's the life that you get to experience. And nobody can tell you it's wrong when you call it because you've called it and you own it. Yes. Isn't that amazing? You get to call it and you get to own it. So, you know, one of the gifts that I want to give you is really what I call um, a success kit, right? Um, and it's just a, a number of things that are in it. Um, uh, you know, a little when you're not calm, a little infographic, like when I'm not calm, 99 ways to call the shot in your life. Um, and a couple of these things that I think might be kind of nice um, uh, for you to have and just try to just know that life has you, but you have the opportunity, the profound opportunity to lead it whatever way you want to lead it. So I hope that's I hope that's that's good for 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 you. I hope that's what yeah. you're looking for, August. So let me know. Yes, yes, yes. No, you are you are so on point. You guys stay connected with her, so you're there when the ebook release get, re is released. Get the toolkit. Follow her on social media. You guys already know. If you're on my website or whatever whatever platform you're streaming through, the links are there. Connect with her. And Shireen, thank you for bringing so much value and such a beautiful essence to this podcast. Mm. I'm going to let you have a break for two seconds, but <laughs> I will be, look, but I guarantee you for next season, I don't even know what the theme is yet, but I know you're going to fit. <laughs> oh, well, I appreciate it. It has been a blast. Thank you so much for this miracle conversation. Thank you. Well, you guys, we are out of here. We will talk to you later. Until the next time, deuces. Thank you for joining me today. Remember to cultivate a mindset that is biased towards taking action. No bitching, whining, or complaining. Here our mantra is, real women don't bitch, we get shit done. See you next week as I continue to bring you what you need to keep your head in the game and beast your business. Don't forget to hit subscribe and leave us a five-star review. Would you like a specific topic covered? Have a question you would like answered live? Then head on over to realwomendon'tbitchpodcast.com. Subscribe to my email list. Hit me up and I got you. Interested in being a guest speaker? You walk the walk? Then you can sign up on the website too. This is your number one advanced mental conditioning specialist for entrepreneurs, Mrs. Raw, Real, and Relentless. Signing out. Deuces! Inspire, empower, grab your girls and soar a little higher, unlock the fire in you.